When you look at organ-specific sites, colon cancer is generally in the top three leading causes of death for both men and women. And what I'm about to say is going to sound incredibly bold and controversial. It seems increasingly true to me, which is nobody should ever die from colon cancer. And I would add the same for esophageal and stomach. And the reason for that is, especially in colon, the progression from non-cancer to cancer is visible to the naked eye through the transition of non-malignant polyp to malignant polyp. So if you did this as a thought experiment, if you did a colonoscopy on somebody every single day of their life, they would never get colon cancer because at some point you would see the polyp, you would remove it while it is non-cancerous and they would not get cancer. So of course, how do you turn that thought experiment into a real life idea? Well, you have to ask the question, what is the shortest interval of time for which a person can have a completely normal colonoscopy until they can have a cancer? There's no clear answer to this question, and we've done a lot of work on it, and I've spoken with a lot of gastroenterologists about it, and there are certainly some case reports that it can happen in as little as six to eight months. Of course, one has to question whether, in fact, people had perfectly normal colonoscopies six to eight months earlier, and it's possible that they did not, and that something was actually missed at the time. But I think most people would agree that if you had a colonoscopy every one to two years, the likelihood that you could ever develop a colon cancer, while maybe not zero, is so remote that you could effectively take colon cancer off the list of the top 10 reasons why someone dies of cancer. And so it's for that reason that I'm very aggressive when it comes to this type of screening, which also includes upper endoscopy. So you basically get for free the esophagus and stomach when you look at the entire colon rectum, anus. And what are your costs? Well, your costs are obviously the dollar cost, which is not cheap. I can't tell you what the average cost of a colonoscopy. I think when I get them done, because I'm getting them done outside of regular screening, so I'm paying for them. They're certainly not cheap. I want to say maybe I'm paying 2000 for a colonoscopy. So that's a huge cost. And then there's obviously the risk of the sedation, which again is not zero. In the hands of someone who's doing this every minute of every day, it's very small. And then, of course, there's the risk of perforation, which, again, is also incredibly small, especially in a healthy individual. And even if it does happen, it's generally something that's pretty easy to manage. So, again, is this something that I'm taking lightly? No, it's not. And I can't tell you yet what the ideal frequency is because at some point, for example, a colonoscopy every day would be a silly idea on all of those metrics, right? Your risk of complication is clearly going to exceed your risk of cancer, notwithstanding the cost and daily challenges of bowel preps. So where is that number? I don't know, but it's much more frequently than what's being done today. That's what I would propose. It's not every five to 10 years. So it's probably every one to three years would be my intuition. I think the other thing there, and to follow up Raj's episode is episode 61, and another good resource on this is after Chadwick Bozeman passed away, we did a weekly email on it, and we'll link to it in the show notes. It's called Colorectal Cancer Screening. And I think the other thing that was talked about in there, which you do a little different, is not only the frequency, but the age in which you start your patients for their first colonoscopy. I think the standard is 50 or 45 now, but either way, you prefer much earlier. I think they are moving it down. I mean, in our practice, we think 40 is the age at which a person should have their first colonoscopy if they have no history of colon cancer. About when I had my first one was 40 or 41. I'm 49 right now, and I'm scheduled for a colonoscopy in a month, and that'll probably be my fourth one. And to be clear, this requires me arguing a little bit with my primary care physician who's saying, Peter, you're being a bit ridiculous. But then I say, look, I want you to go and read what I've written about this. Let's hop on a call and let's discuss this. In the end, he's like, okay. And then you could argue, well, maybe I get my way because I'm a doctor and I can be more persuasive in my arguments. But I think these are the discussions patients need to be having with their doctors if they're in a position that they can afford to do this outside of their regular screening. And if not, I think they should push to see whatever can be done with inside the bounds of their insurance as well. I realize that we're all tainted by our biases, but 
the images of the people that I have seen who have had colon cancer before the age of 50, I mean, those are seared into my brain. And that's why I think those are just such asymmetric benefits. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.